Greetings, and welcome to the Filter Specification Analysis Video Tutorial Series, Part 3 of 3, Fine-Tuning the Synthesized Matrix. In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up the topology and how to fine-tune your synthesized matrix until we meet the customer specifications. We will continue to use the previous specification in Part 2 as the design target. If you haven't already watched Part 1 or Part 2, I strongly recommend you review those tutorials first. I've included a link in the description below for your convenience. Picking up from where we left off in Part 2, let's go to the Matrix Synthesis page. Click the Physical Topology tab to edit the desired topology. In this current version, Symmetric provides users with thousands of practical topologies, such as cascaded triplet, cascaded quadruplet, hybrid CT and CQ, folded box section, and extended box, to name a few. Symmetrix also offers a feature to use customized topologies. If a topology is not set up, Symmetrix will return the folded canonical topology as the default. Users can define their desired structure by interacting with the matrix graphic directly and editing and toggling the checkboxes, as shown here. In this case, the two cascaded quadruplets will be applied. After setting up the topology, users can click OK to go back to the main page and click Calculate All to obtain the corresponding matrix. After setting up the topology, we need to rework the matrix to meet specification requirements. First, let's move the transmission zeros to gain more return loss margins. The lower transmission zeros correspond to smaller coupling values. When lower than 100 dB, issues may be introduced in the simulation or when performing test and measurement activities. The extreme low or high coupling coefficients is hard to realize physically. Usually, a safe design target is to leave the isolation level with at least 3 dB of margin. To achieve this, we will edit the transmission zero values 3.21, 3.409, 3.29, and 3.45 as shown here. Once you complete your edit, remember to click Calculate All. Symmetrix will now retrieve the corresponding matrix. As you can see, all the transmission zeros are now set at a reasonable values. As shown in part two, users can adjust their pass fail criteria in the specification tab shown again here. The next step is to fine tune the matrix until all the requirements are met. The Q value is an experience and structure based number. We will have a separate training video to show the relationship to, between the unloaded queue and peak power handling calculation. Based on experience, we will use a value of 4000 as our design goal. Symmetrix provides uniform and non-uniform options to meet different design requests. Once the user inputs the number, it will default as a series of the uniform value. By clicking the arrow, Users can modify the value to be a non-uniform queue. In this case, however, the uniform queue will be used. Once you input the queue value, click Refresh, and the lossy performance will be shown in the S-parameter plot. We will now use the Fine-Tune function to optimize the performance. The Fine-Tune matrix function allows users to fine-tune the matrix by either shifting up and down the frequency, or by enlarging and then narrowing the bandwidth without changing the design frequency and bandwidth. Go to Coupling Matrix, click Edit Matrix, and enable this feature. Since the isolation has lots of margin, we will need to enlarge the bandwidth to gain more return loss and insertion loss margins. The following is an iterative process and depending on specification complexity, may take some time. 
As a start, input 5 MHz and click OK. Go back to the Specification tab to see the Return Loss and Insertion Loss margin improvements. As you can see from the plot, there's not enough isolation margin to compensate for the thermal shift. For better user experience, we will attempt to fix the top part of the graph. We continue to enlarge the bandwidth, this time with an input of 4 MHz. After the fine-tuning step, we can see that the insertion loss margin has improved, while simultaneously retaining the isolation margins. We will keep enlarging the bandwidth while shifting the frequency to balance the performance on both sides of the operating band. Continuing with the iterative process, we will enlarge the bandwidth with an input of 1.8 MHz and shift down the frequency with an input of negative 0.8 MHz. You will now see all the requirements are met. Once the design is complete, we can go to the Project Management menu and save the design by clicking the Update Project button. For more training material, the user can go to the eLibrary in their Symmetrix account to download and read more materials. Alternatively, please contact us by email at support at symmetrixtech.com. This concludes the three-part filter specification analysis tutorial video series for Symmetrix. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and good luck with your designs.